how to automate your call tree management right so yes this is going to be recorded and hopefully uh, we will then put it up on our youtube and which means you can watch it anytime and you can feel free to share it with your colleagues and friends right so speaker today yay Hi. <laughs> we will have jasmine our business development manager i hope you can hear her she will be uh our uh, going through this call tree explaining what this is about and how we can help you automate it so that you don't have to do all the tedious work so uh without further ado i'm just gonna hand it over to jasmine who is now gonna share her screen and her slides Okay, so uh, good morning, everybody. So um, today we are talking about call tree. So I'm not too sure, you know, uh, how many of you have actually really know call tree, you know, in that sense. So, but actually, uh, just to, you know, I mean, for a start, for those who doesn't know, uh, we can actually, uh, you know, fall back on the uh, dictionary uh, definition. Can we, do, can we do a poll then? Oh, ah, okay, okay, sure, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah let me, let's launch a poll. Uh, you all can answer uh, this is poll. Is you know, what is a call tree? Okay, um, yeah, please, uh, but in you know, first really absolutely no idea. I got one vote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, but we do have people who say I'm using it in my organization. Oh, quite a number of you are using it in your organization. Oh, that's good. That's How good. interesting. Okay, great. Um, heard of it, not use it in my work. Um, so, but we have, but, but it's fine. You just join us so that we can share with you and uh, what it is all about for three. Okay. And, and I still see uh, quite a number actually have used it uh, in their organization when hopefully our presentation to change to their share a bit more and help you uh, see whether this is a solution that can make your life easier. Okay, so, okay, let's end the poll. So you can see, basically, I think uh, I would say most of the people uh, do know and uh and actually do have you know uh, uh put in place a call tree you know in the organization or you know do know but they may not have used it but uh for for the benefit of those who actually are not very sure what is a call tree then let's look at the dictionary definition of the call tree okay so basically if you check the so-called dictionary it says that it is just a hierarchy of you know uh people uh in which you know you actually have one person you know forward the message to the other person and then down the line so on and so forth so it is arranged in the in, in the in the so-called in the structure of a tree so that one person can actually easily forward the messages to all the people eventually and the purpose of such a call tree is to actually help you know for a rapid distribution of actually information you have to disseminate information to the right people in the right order so that is the purpose of a call tree itself but actually, are you aware that actually call tree has so-called, uh, you know, two kinds in, in general? One is actually the ones that probably people may know, you know, uh, that, that you may have implemented somehow in your organization, which is actually a manual way of, uh, you know, informing others in times of, you know, emergencies, for example. So if you look at this uh, picture on the left, you can see that, you know, one person is trying to call the next person and then the next person is trying to call the next two and so on and so forth. So this kind of uh, way that you actually come up as a, as a tree structure, it is very manual because actually basically one person got to hold the phone and then dial the number or, you know, flip through the phone book and try to find the right person to call. And in that sense, it is very slow. Why, why not have one person call everyone? Why must it be separated to different people to call? Because it's easier that way, ma. So, for example, yeah. in times of emergency, right? Are, are you going to actually have one person, you know, oh, picking yeah. up, call one by one, or you try to have a tree structure in such a sense that you know, yeah. one person are in charge of calling the next two, three. Then right. you got the message and you reply. You will follow down the line, so that in that sense, it is in a way faster uh, than one person calling. Yeah, in, in a way, the call tree is uh, useful because it distributes the work. Then you can reach out to more yes. people faster. You know, yes. instead of one person trying to call every single one, right? Exactly, yeah, okay. exactly. So, but but you know, even even so, your right. manual call tree is still quite you know it's still quite manual as the saying goes, right? It's still slow. Yeah, it's still it is slow. quite unproductive. You know, imagine the person who who, who you call never answer. Right. Then, you have, you have to then, call then okay. take note that I need to call this person again. again. Yes. Right. Just in case. All right. So there's no way to, to know and to, to exactly. So, and the person actually yeah. down the line after the person will mm. not be able to receive also, you know, mm. because the person hasn't responded. How will he or she knows that I have to call the down, the next few persons down the line? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's very unproductive. Yeah. Yeah, and yes, and in fact, actually, it is also quite inaccurate. 
imagine especially for the reporting part ah, so so some errors can because of human there's a lot of human yes. errors possible that, yes. that yeah so, okay okay what's yeah. the alter- alternative then alternative of course you know uh the best is going for automations right right yeah so you know when when you have automation you know you have actually uh you know a phone so-called a phone tree that has one person calling a few others then a few others right uh you know rather than doing this you do an automated one you have a system mm. to actually help to uh you know distribute the information rapidly I right. think in times of such, you know, uh, uh, emergencies, in times of such, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, the need to actually uh, reach out to the people to ascertain their safety, for example, I think uh, having a agile uh, call tree uh, by automating it would really help. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's like it's like it's like, it's like something happened. I mean, I mean, over Singapore, we don't have, but let's say we have earthquake, yes. and then we are no want to make sure that everyone is safe. We want to check whether they're safe. So you send a message, and because call tree normally that's a response. So if they respond, means they are they're safe. Or if, if they don't respond, then hey, well, someone's going to go look up for look yes, for this person. Exactly. That's like how you can use call trees for that. Uh, exactly, okay, exactly. Okay. In fact, actually having such kind of automation, right? Um, there are actually several benefits that 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 we will definitely look into. Mm-hmm. So, for example, one of them, right, having automated through technology, you uh-huh. will actually help to definitely increase the response time. Because what happened is that you know, um, having someone to actually manually, you know, look through, through look through the phone book or dial the numbers rather than versus somebody who just have a click of the button to actually activate the call tree mm. of course it will help to you know increase uh, reduce the time where you know in such situation every second count yes. it will reduce the time to actually activate and also you know getting a a, a, a faster time of uh, people responding to the call tree activation to right, the broadcast right. so that's definitely one of the you know improving of the response time and then secondly of course you know uh because an automated call tree will more or less have you know certain kind of like uh, uh formats you know, for example, you can have multi uh, channels to reach out to the person. Then in that case, you know, having some kind of fallback mechanism will actually help to increase the reliability of the communication oh. itself. Multi channels meaning that you can you have like SMS and voice, voice call. You can also do voice call. Okay, yes, right. So exactly. automated voice call. Yes, correct. So in that sense, you know, it will help to actually uh, reduce the risk of actually, you know, for example, SMS doesn't reach. You know, everybody knows SMS okay. is not guaranteed. Right. Yeah. So you have alternative channels to consider that will help to actually increase the reliability of you know communication outreach okay. to the intended recipients itself. Okay. Yeah. So that is the second benefit. And then the, the, the third one definitely is more on you know having to optimize your resource allocation. Mm-hmm. Because having you know having somebody just one person to have a click of a button will oh, be yeah. definitely much faster than you know having a few pe- activating in the sense you know uh, a, a group of people who are actually the reps to activate. yeah yeah and that person maybe if that person is not responsive then a whole group under yes. that person will not get be contacted exactly, at all right? exactly so, so okay. having automated call tree will help to actually yeah, having a you know a, a, a efficient uh, you know, utilization of your resources. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then the fourth benefit will be actually definitely uh, talking about adaptability, uh, adaptability to ah. any changes because you never know in an organization, people come and go. Right, right. Yeah. So, okay. So, so you need to update the system. Yeah. To contact this wrong, yes. you mean contacting the wrong person, the person <laughs> right. that left the company. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's the thing. And then the new person who, who are in, you know, will never be able to actually get the call, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. But that's having cool. automation would help because it's just, an updating of a phone book, for yeah, example, you can, you can manually also, or rather, you can check your whole tree on um, mm. whether it's valid. If anyone's left, mm. anyone is new, joined in. Exactly. Then you can actually, 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 apart from that, you also think about it like, having a manual call tree, right? It's actually having one person to actually call to the next few. There's a structure to it. Say, for mm. example, mm. a rep handling uh, maybe a uh, senior management and then down. Right. But if there's somebody who actually, you know, when the op chart starts to change correct you may have to spend time and effort you know to yeah change and then you got to tell because it's manual you got to inform the people manually as well yeah so, so all right take a while all right to make changes exactly okay. so so that's why it is not that agile you know okay. as compared so, to so, automated so, ones yes, yes. and then of course the last point uh which is also quite important uh, it's about how you streamline the crisis management, you know, uh, I mean, itself. Lah. So basically, when during such kind of like high pressure situations, uh, I think such kind of coordination using automation will really help 
to you know mobilize your resources yeah. to disseminate information yeah because crisis really got so many things to do mm. so this part of broadcasting and all this mm. you can automate it it saves a lot of time you can yes. focus on other more important things all right well, and right? also help the management to make you know decisions more quickly okay okay, okay? That's cool. so that is really the automated core tree what what is it for you know the purpose of having it and then the next one of course you know uh, i would like to talk about just a minute Okay, so then that's where, you know, when we talk about automated core tree, uh, that is something that we have in our product portfolio. Okay. So we have something called SendQuick Assure. Sure. Assure. So we assure you that you will reach out to your people, <laughs> yeah, to the intended recipients, okay? okay? So it is actually an automated uh, core tree portal that uh, the BCP, you know, I mean, basically BCP, um, business continuity, you know, planning or the reps of the BC BCM, you know, can actually achieve such kind of agile uh, communications, you know, and coordinations when you were to actually activate core trees in times of emergency. Okay, and 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 it's gonna be in the cloud. Oh yes, yes. So, so it can be, you know, if you're having, let's say, a building emergency, it can be someone else. You don't have to worry that uh, your server is in that building, then mm. that's not working, so it's in the cloud. Uh, right. right, and okay. some of the highlighted uh, key features is that, you know, it's a portal, uh, yeah. and it's user-friendly, simple to understand, so the learning curve is actually not steep, uh, and you we actually support, you know, basically unlimited users, la. unlimited users and administrators. Of course, you can actually set different rights, and uh, call tree, as the word go, you know, automated call tree, it has to be as automated as possible. So we can have just one click of the uh, so-called your, your, your broadcast that you have actually pre-prepared that you can update and then you can just click and go. So right, that right. kind of, you know, uh, features we do have. And of course, you know, we also do have reportings. We have dashboards to tell you the figures uh, for your reporting to your management and also to have uh, audit trail in place. So I think without further ado, let me actually share some demo. Like okay, demo. Before the demo, oh, the okay. quick question is, sure. will the slides be shared with us after the session? Okay. Uh, <laughs> the slides. Um, actually, the slides, because yeah. yeah, we can, there's a few slides, a few pointers, we can actually share that, but most of it is ready in the video, we'll be sharing the video as yes. well. So, you'll, you'll get it, you'll get it. Yes. Okay, right. let's go to the okay. demo. So, if you, if you look at this portal itself, it is actually a, um, a single portal for all your, all your users to log in, be it whether is it a normal user or be it an administrator. So, when they first log in, uh, you have to basically create your user like, who who are supposed to log into the portal. Then you can come to the user configuration to create your users. Okay, just a minute. Uh, then you can also, you know, assign roles uh, to the users. This, so is, you, this is people who are in the either the committee or the team mm, that's in charge of mm, uh, communication during our crisis. Mm, not for each individual employee, right? No, 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 right? no, 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 okay, no. So yeah, it's, it's actually the reps, uh, the representative right, the rep, who actually okay. are supposed to uh, do the activation. Right. Okay. Yeah, so you can have more than one. So if your organization is big, you have more than one so that you can actually have accountability uh, for your department, I mean, so be it. Or you can actually have just one single person to activate all. That all is also right, possible. Right. So the users can be maybe different section head and then they need to update their uh, the employees' yes. information in case they... Yeah, and they can just, you know, like have reports after that that is pertaining. Ah, to the they have reports as well. Okay, yeah, we'll so talk about easier, that. Yeah, it's okay. easier to, to see in that way. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that's all about, you know, user configuration. And then, of course, you know, I mean, there are more so-called uh, administrator roles like you know how are you going to actually set how do you wish to actually have your users to receive the account okay, details so this is the key one the, the actual mm, so when you create users us, yeah. uh, you know when we actually it's more of like when you create users and then uh you cannot be you know individual oh, sorry them. this is to to, to send to yeah. user that you created yes. so that they know what to do next yes what's their account credentials ah, for them to log okay, in to okay. do the necessary actions oh, i see i see yeah. so you can actually add your customized message here in the template la. yes correct so you basically can change you know whatever you know ah. oh sorry that you want then of course uh, we also have uh, the other part we bought of uh, the address book itself because you will want to have all your contacts in place okay, so, so this could be your employees contacts mm, okay. exactly those people whom you want to connect like Ah, whoever you want to broadcast to. Yes. So it could even be like someone, uh, people visiting your building, then you have a system to collect the visitors. Then you, if, if there's an event, uh, you know, emergency, you want to broadcast to them. You yeah, can, I can just you upload, can put the list here, yeah, upload, upload to this, list. this, this, this address book and then send to them. So, mm, and correct, okay. correct. So of course, you know, you can actually uh, do the way as to how you define your file because different people may have different way of defining the files. So you can actually have name and mobile number as the mandatory ones. Then the rest is more of up to you whether or not you want to upload. 
Okay, okay. So these are fields that you uh, want to have in your address book whether, and you can actually choose to have it or not have it. But there are some key parameters, definitely mandatory, right? Yeah. Name and mobile number. Yeah, so the rest are, are optional, okay, yes, but you correct. can configure it here. Yes, correct. Then uh, we also have uh, audit trail. Audit trail? Okay. Yeah, so audit trail is more of actually for you to see, you know, like... Uh, oh, data. <laughs> like, nothing to audit. <laughs> nothing to audit. No, no. Actually, okay, if you take a look. Huh? Oh, wow. Okay, now more data. So, oh, so it's like, who did what? <laughs> And and you want to check no no uh that the last change or some changes. Yeah, on the correct, correct. So you can see all the all the actions that that's been taken by the user. Ah. And of course, you know if you add uh if you want to add more administrator, right? You can actually come into the company info and just uh key in the so called the the other administrators that you want to give access rights to. Okay, so yeah. you can have more than one administrator. Mm, correct, correct. And of okay. course, you know, uh, you can also force 2FA. So we support uh, two-factor authentication for the logins. Ah. So you can actually have an option uh, to enforce okay. it. So we have added security, you don't have unauthorized access. Yes. Because it's very critical, uh, sensitive uh, system, right? Correct, correct. Okay. And then also because it's an automated call tree, right? So you also want to know, um, you know, how, how long you want the response time to be a so-called a valid response time in your capturing of your data see, okay. yeah because it cannot be like for example my call tree is actually uh you know i, I want people to respond within uh, half an hour so if i put half an hour it's 30 minutes here so anything beyond half an hour i will deem that you know the person's uncontactable uncontactable or you know contactable but never meet the so-called sla you know oh, the, the, the okay. agreement okay. that you said that you know you must respond within this timing right right you know for fire so, exercises for example yes okay can be like a few days later mm -hmm. I'm okay. Yeah, correct. So, so we have a so-called a, a, a variable, I would say a, a time limit like, that you can yeah. really set to, 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 to so-called validate a response. Correct. So usually in cases where you use this very time sensitive, yeah. so we need to have a quick response as well. Correct. Yeah. So that's also much about the setting part. Of course, you can change password, right. you know, all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so now it's the MIDI part, right? Ah, now it's the MIDI the part. Setup. Okay. So the setup itself. So setup itself, uh, okay, you can see that there's dashboard. So dashboard is more for you to see that um you know the so called a graphical view of actually what is uh what is the result of an uh, of an activation or of a broadcast. So you can tell that there are actually status bar to tell you that you know whether uh is this uh, a number you know in queue to send out or uh, whether somebody has actually uh you know uh, uh received the send messages uh -huh. or there's no call you know to the person whom you try to call out. Or you know the line is busy, for example, or you know it is actually a fail, fail send out. Then acknowledgement is like if somebody were to actually respond to you, whether is it via a SMS back to you, or whether is it actually via a call, you know, with a keypad number, you know, zero to nine to you, that is a response. Uh, so you can have actually a, a quick view of all the exercises that you did, or even during an emergency, uh, who who was sent out, you know, you got percentages of who received. Uh, yes, correct. So you can, queue, yeah. So yeah. when you say about percentages, yes, you are right. So you can see that actually, uh, this is a graphical, uh, this is a graphical view, and this is actually more of a tabular statistical view of the broadcast. So we have a so called a turnaround time. When when is the start date? When is the completion date? And then uh, date and time, uh, basically, and also who 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 how many have you sent? And uh, uh, what is the response count like? And are you able to tell who who didn't respond? Uh yes yes you can yes. Drill down to that detail. Yeah, it's more of uh on the report side already. Oh uh, oh yeah, that's yeah. a good reporting. Okay, oh, this right. is a quick view yes. dashboard. Of this it. is more of, of, more of a high level view of I actually see, of see. a broadcast. Uh, what is the you know level that was being activated? So in ah. this case, you know, you can see that there's only uh one call, one round of call, and then whereas the second broadcast is actually you know uh we have a few rounds. The first round is actually one one call, and then the second level is actually also one one SMS. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that's how you read the tables, and um, yeah, and then again, you know, you can actually do exporting, whether it's via Excel or PDF for your reporting management. Right. So, so you can actually, um, because not everyone can access the system, you want to ex yes. export it out so you can put in a report you can show to people who are who have access to this system. Yes, correct, correct. So this is the turnaround time as mm. I mentioned earlier. So this is actually so much on the reporting on the high level view. So if you want to look at another report, it's actually more of the so-called the, the, the detailed level of broadcast. Ah, even more details. Okay, yes, so. correct. So if I were to go here, 
under the broadcast report. If you look at um, maybe this one, I can just just pick one to show you. Okay, so if you look at the dashboard earlier, there were two broadcasts. Mm -hmm. So one of them is actually the same thing that you have seen, right? But you see more. You see the detail part, the individual response. Whoever responded, what was the contact number at which cycle, and then what was the response content? Okay. Yeah, that and what looks familiar. <laughs> Yeah, and this this table uh, can also be found, you know, the details can be found under the response section. So ah. if I show you. Oh, let me go to this. You can see that. Yeah, I can see that yesterday uh, under this broadcast, this is the response at whichever time and date. Of course, you know, I can even add further, you know, as a representative, I say, okay, and on the I can just even add more uh, remarks to that, to that, to that, to the record. Okay, so this one is more of a detail. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, a broadcast that you send out, and once you send out, you can actually uh, show what does the iteration means. Um, oh, let me. For some people don't understand. Yeah. Sure. So basically, okay, this is the one that I'm going to talk about next, which is actually how you set up your broadcast, ah, and okay. there are different stages. So we have different stages that can adhere to your different uh, workflow. Mm. So at iteration means is that at every every uh, particular stage of your broadcast. Okay, so the mm. stage one one means means uh, uh, level one mm. cycle one. Ah, okay. Yeah. So so you can you can oh I guess this one will probably understand more when you yes. see the setup. Huh? Yes. So meaning by short this one basically. You send it out and then you can do a few cycles for the same broadcast. Yes, exactly. Uh, and then there's a level two means a second way to communicate, but that one also has multiple cycles. Yes, correct. Okay, so one correct. one means one cycle, one uh one level. Yeah, first level, first cycle. Then this is okay. like second level, first cycle, and so on and so forth. Sure. Okay, I think yeah. that one we need to go to the country setup for people to understand a bit mm. more. And right. Yeah. Correct. Okay. okay. So of course, you know, let me go through uh so this is the reporting done. So let me go through to the contact list first. So that when I go to the broadcast setup, you understand where am I getting it from. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So under contrast book itself, uh you can actually upload contacts. Maybe so one one uh no, this is a this is the file upload method. So it's ah. like a batch upload. So remember just now when I showed you earlier under the system configuration itself, you can so-called define your format of a file. Okay. As in so-called the data format. Oh, you can receive it in different formats. Mm, so you can have like, for example, I can have like in my in my in my file itself, I can have name, I can have the primary number, secondary number, and then uh what is the existing group of this contact and also the email. Uh, yeah, so this is more for you know like uh, uh uploading how how much uh information you want to actually upload on the address book as a uh, as a as a you know as a guide for for the company itself. But when we do you know sending out, we are actually looking at the numbers lah, the numbers to do SMSs, the numbers to do voice call. So these are the critical ones, and also you know the name of the person, so that you know so that we can actually do the reporting on the dashboard and the reports. Just a quick one because mm. you mentioned that the phone number must include country code without yes. the plus sign. Meaning your exercise you can actually send um to more than one country at one go. Or... Yes, correct. Oh, yeah, which... right. Right, so yeah, doesn't right. limit myself to having activation to only Singapore. You know, exactly. In other country, I have to do another another activation i can actually put all in one and and yes. activate the, the, no matter which country they are at all huh? oh, right all right so i believe uh there are participants here today who are actually from overseas yeah 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 so right. so that will help because uh you know sometimes uh different countries may have different regulations you know and okay. you know going through this and you know going through club will help like, basically yeah all yeah right. Right. yeah then uh you know that is the that is the context part and of course you know as uh, as i mentioned you also can have groups so you can basically create groups and then uh, assign the uh, so-called the context to the groups. So the groups can be different departments mm. or your know, different locations. Yeah, so I can buildings. have like this and then, you know, right. like this, I can say this is the sales department, for example. Okay, I see. Okay. Yeah, so you, you classify the group then. You can actually choose to activate to a certain group only, a certain section, not, not necessarily to the whole this. Exactly. Uh, okay. Correct. Correct. So, so that's why uh, this is what the contact list is for, like, or rather, what the address code is meant for you to consolidate everything. Okay. Uh, and then of course the next one is actually your messages. What is the content that you want to broadcast? So you can have, say, for example, fire drill exercises activation, 
or you know uh emergency you know evacuation you know what's the content basically of your broadcast okay so now we're talking about uh these templates mm. uh, you can just key in something that that normally uh, you send out yes. instead of every time that you yes. need to key in again all right yeah, so you can actually yeah. pre-configure your messages pre-configure the mm. messages uh, okay so you okay. really have a a system of uh, uh systemized way to send a message and you have the message template ready you can just key in here uh, and i don't have to waste time keying in the actual crisis right yeah activated yes, yes. Time, huh? so imagine uh, your call tree itself uh, you want to automate you must first have the number first uh -huh. have the person uh -huh. and then after that you also need to have the message content right so and then of course you know after the broadcast is done you also must make sure that there's reporting so okay. now we talk about the so-called the biggest one which is actually how to really activate with all this information how are you going to activate and how are you going to actually structure your call tree in such a way that you can activate as per what you wish mm, okay. okay so over here then we look at the call tree setup itself so call tree setup has two parts one part is just the broadcast setup the other one is broadcast template it may sound aliens to 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 many of us la, but let me difference? yeah what's the difference like <laughs> to to me i mean for the first time when i see I was, it also is i also feel the same way right. but if i were to go in to understand i i do understand the purpose of actually why why is that really a broadcast template and why is it a broadcast setup okay so a broadcast template is like this okay if you take a look at uh, uh -huh. every broadcast itself will have a name to it Okay. And then after that, whether do you want to receive a response? Because you can use this as a mass notification oh, without response. It can be just a mass informing. You don't need to know whether you uh, you need to respond or not. Yes, okay. exactly. So, so so you can have like you know this this secret assurance doesn't mean that it's actually used for just strictly core three per se. Ah, uh, you, uh, you can have a two mass in one notification as well. Yeah, so it's like a two in one uh solution used for marketing messages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so whatever that is actually uh, 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 um, going you know in line with the regulations i think it's okay la. Yeah. i think <laughs> uh, marketing you use our other systems uh, not this system correct. this is a specialized system yeah because this there's a the, the, the reason behind why this is actually meant for call tree purpose la. okay yeah okay. so call tree itself okay so for my for my uh explanation in this demo i will just put it as a response as a yes so that it will be in line with the ones that ah, i shared okay, the then channel. Yeah, then this is the channels. Okay, so just now you were asking uh, about the what is the one one, you know, iteration, what is two one. Yes. So yes. what happened is that you can actually structure the way your core tree would look and feel. Mm. You know, so you can say that okay, level one, uh, I'm thinking, you know, okay, when I do my broadcast, when I click, I want to make sure that, you know, to all the numbers that I'm sending out, I want to send out via SMS to the primary number. That means the so called the default number of the recipients. Okay, so this could be uh okay. Prime, in this case, SMS must be a mobile number. Yes. So primary number probably is that mobile number that yes. you want to send to. Correct. So it's up to you to define uh in your recipient list what is a primary number. Okay. Okay. Then of course you know uh you can have cycles of such. So I can send you know up to five times and then at each you know one minute apart. Okay, so you send SMS five times to the same person. Yes. All right, but what if the person respond? Do you still send them? Uh, no. So that oh, that is the that right, is the right. that is the the thing about about SendQuick Assure being different from other uh SendQuick uh SaaS solutions. Ah, okay. So yeah. he, so here is that it, it says five cycles. You will send them message until they re reply five times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. And but that every minute. Uh, <laughs> For th those who didn't respond. For only for those who respond. Ah, okay, okay. So you respond, uh, then okay, you're yeah. fine. Okay. All right. So, so if you imagine uh, you have actually uh you know five people that uh, you want to send, right? Uh, after the first level, first cycle, uh one responded. So you're left with the remaining four. So uh, at the second minute, uh we will only send the SMS out to the remaining four. Four person. Uh, uh, four persons okay. remaining okay. Number, okay. the primary number, and then so on and so forth. That's good, that's good. Uh, because we say I already responded why you can still yeah. telling me. All right, so right. we don't do spamming that's, in that sense. Uh. Right, okay. Yeah, so that's how the architecture works for this uh same mm -hmm. show. And uh the same thing goes for you know, like you know, for example, this is the first level. Okay. You may think that, you know, like what I mentioned earlier, we can have a fallback mechanism. So we have alternative channels to actually reach out to the person. Yeah. So we keep sending five, even after sending five SMS, they yeah. don't reply. Then so what right. How? What happened, right? So right. you can actually have, you know, you can structure your call tree in such a way that maybe level two, uh, I can this time round try voice call to maybe the secondary number. Uh, we can be a landline, right? Since yes. it's a voice call, so yes. it doesn't need to be a mobile number. 
Yes. Okay. All right. You can actually call, you know, to the mobile number, or you can actually call to the landline. So up to you to decide. Okay. So for me, I would I would take it as you know, primary, I just put uh, you know, a mobile number. Secondary, I just put all the landline numbers. Yes. That's possible. Okay. That's yeah. Good. Then uh, you can also then you know make sure that you uh, you can configure the interval between level one and level two. So you can say that maybe this time round, you know, after all the five rounds of SMSs, probably I want to take maybe two minutes apart. From that means after five SMSs, uh, five rounds of and cycles, you know, answer. answer. I just wait a while first. Two minutes later, that I start my call. Yes, yes. Uh, so so that is possible. And then within this call itself, how many rounds I want to call uh to uh, those who didn't cycles as well. Yeah, the number of cycles. So maybe this time round I call three times and then uh one minute apart. So maybe you know the remaining four uh you know left uh three who didn't respond. Then mm. so if you call um, do you have an example of what, what you mean by a response? A uh, response is actually somebody who uh, SMS back or somebody who actually uh, use a keypad note and actually click on something and then during the voice call and then send it back to you. Uh, so for SMS, it's easy. When you send SMS, you can just tell reply with something then just SMS yeah. back. But with a call, the response is they like need zero to... Zero to nine. La. <laughs> but it's SMS back or they call back? Uh, uh, during the call itself... Oh, the uh, call will be there. Yeah. And you have to reply to the call. Yes, so by like the IBR key. interactive voice recorder, uh, that kind of yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, voice uh, yes. system, all right? So, okay, so you have to reply then. If you still don't reply, then... We then we will send the next round and the next round and, and the next round. <laughs> and we have to send someone to look for you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. So this is actually all about you know a uh, template. So if you think if you think about it, this is a broadcast template. That means how you want to structure your call tree. Oh, so it could be a fire drill exercise template. Mm. It could be an actual crisis template. Exactly. Uh, in, the, in terms of a uh, something goes down, mm. earthquake a template, a fire drill template. Uh, some different, uh, so you can actually yeah. call it different template. Right? All right, correct. Like a pandemic template, you know, pandemic, you know, reach out now Wear for some. Mask. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone, yeah. No. So, so this is actually uh, 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 your, your so called your workflow of your call tree. How mm -hmm. you want to structure mm -hmm. your call tree. Mm -hmm. So, we term this as broadcast template. Okay, so then what about setup then? Ah, so, okay, so that's the difference. Huh? That's the difference between broadcast setup and template. So, with this template, basically, you know, your company structure is I want to have maybe like how many rounds of SMS, how many rounds of calls. Uh, then okay. I come here, it's easy because I just select my template, I just put it in, that's it. It just populate whatever that uh, you set I'll, I'll, So you don't need to reconfigure all this part. Yes, uh, correct. Manually. So you can actually pick it up from a template. If you already decided a policy wise, this mm. is how we should do this. Mm. Put in a template, and every time you mm. exercise, you just call up the templates. Uh, yeah, correct. So you, if you want to plan for an exercise, you just call up the template to pre-populate first, and then the next thing is you actually set up. So set up wise is actually you know it can be three types. Uh, who. Uh, how, how do you want to actually inform the intended recipients? You can actually pre-save in the address book in groups or in context. Or uh, if you do not have, you can actually ad hoc, you know, uh, all, the, all the ad hoc, you know, just okay. manually type in all the numbers la, or just copy see, paste the numbers. See. Yeah. Then, of course, you know, you can actually have an auto-reply message if you want to acknowledge uh, the person who actually responded to you. And then the next one would be basically... Oh, this is... This is a additional message to the person so oh, okay we received your, yes, your message all right yes uh, stay safe more instruction you know, mm. go and call, go and meet at this area to, uh, or something like that all right, right. Okay. all right so so this is more of like an auto reply message uh standing from the company's perspective okay yeah then uh in terms of the so-called the call tree itself you know have, having all the structure is is it's not done yet you need to make sure that there's message content inside but there's template we can pick up from. Ah. ah, so this is the one that I want to share. So it's, yeah. yeah, if you look at select message template, where do you pre-populate the message template, which is here, which I'm which uh which I've actually shared earlier just now. Yeah. Even if you use the template, you can still add, edit it and customize, right? I can okay. change to exclamation okay, mark. Good, good. You know, so, I can put a smiley face. Yeah, it could I be want. some different circumstances. You want to make uh, some changes. Okay. All right. So you can actually do something like this. It, it's not it's not cast in stone that okay. you know you but select this right. and then you cannot make any changes. It's it's actually quite <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's actually quite flexible. Mm, okay. Yeah. Good. Then so after all this is done, then you realize that there are actually a few buttons below. So you can of course, you can you can actually add more huh? Doesn't mean that you you select this this kind of setup. You is you are fixed to that. You can actually add more. Suddenly, the management say, uh, no, 
uh, SMS voice call not enough. I want to try another round of SMS, but this uh, time to the secondary number, for example, if it's a mobile number. What if I, I mean, I think there's not a feature here, but I say I want to send the WhatsApp. You know? Okay, can, can, can. Can we done? Can, but oh. uh, we just have to actually uh, talk separately because what happened is that this is actually a SAS uh, multi tenanted model. Oh. So if you want something that is actually uh, the standard, it's as such. Oh, this is a standard one. Mm. If you want uh, different customize. requirements, we can customize for yes. you as well. Yes. So correct. you want WhatsApp, you want Telegram, you can actually still do it. Yes, correct. As, as long as the notification method, uh, depending on your what channel you want to like to use, we can we can help you in that sense. Mm, correct. Okay. So whatever you know us, I know as Send Quick, where we actually can 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 do you know not just SMS alone or not just voice call alone. Uh, we can support various kinds of social channels so long as we we are adhering to the policy of the apps. Yes. By all means, you know, talk to us. We oh, can we add a level where we send a physical person to go and look for you? <laughs> <laughs> the person never respond. <laughs> the third type of communication. <laughs> uh, the one, the one you may you may need to find other other agencies to help with. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So back to this one. Uh, so when we talk about these levels, you know, it doesn't mean that when you choose the level, that's it. You can actually do adjustment. You can remove this level. I can add the level up. All customizable. All customizable. Right? So it's actually very friendly, user friendly in that sense. Uh, and and also you know there are a few things. So if you realize, hey, I type type type, I realize there's so many mistakes. I just can reset if I want. Oh, reset okay. to the default one. Uh, basically, when you first come in, okay. and then of course you know you can actually save. Uh, so if you see there's two part, there are two buttons here, save and send now. So what's the difference? So save means that you save it for later use. Right. Right. Uh, right. Send means you straight away, you know, broadcast out yes. right now. So you're very sure this is all of what you want and you can just yes. send it out, you do it, you activate it now. Uh, all right, basically you activate But you save it, then how do you activate later? Ah, okay, so that's the thing. So if you look at save, you realize that just now I never touched on this part. I skipped this part just now. There's this activation single oh, and multiple. You can activate one time or multiple times. Yeah, so you can save, ah. to, you can save it to actually activate uh, at the later stage once. Single means Single once. one time. Yeah. Right. And then multiple means that you can actually save it and reuse anytime you want. And how no matter how many times you want, you just click and then it will just activate. Okay. okay. So so single is one time use and multiple it'll just it's multiple you, reuse. Can, you can use it again. Mm, again. again and again. So yeah. I don't have to key in everything again. Correct. <laughs> correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. So then 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 that says you know when you save all this, where does it go? So this will be here at the activation list. All right. Uh, so you see, activate, this is single. So I just click and then that's it. It will be gone. Uh, okay. Uh, so when you do multiple activation, because mm. you define the, the people in that, that that group. So if there's some changes... Oh, you can just come in. And, and edit. And, or so you can go and edit. Mm, and that's different right. people have changed. All and right. Also, so okay. for example, if you actually already have... Uh, I think there's some... Uh, internet connections. <laughs> right, right. Okay, but basically when you come in... Oh, you can click on it to, to uh, see? edit. Yeah, yeah okay. you can actually... Okay, so if you were to add the people to the group, mm. it will pick up the latest. Right, If right. you actually add individual contacts. Ah, example, okay, so you put a group, it doesn't matter. Uh, see, I can just remove and then I can just choose again. Okay, okay. Uh, so you're not worried here. that it keeps sending to the old group of people. Mm. It can send to whatever is in your address book. Oh, right. right. Or suddenly you just say that, oh, uh, I, I want this structure, but the company says that hey, you, you uh -huh. have to send to another group. You can just, you know, right, right. select. Okay, you want to test it first, for example, then you mm -hmm. can put in ad hoc numbers. Yes, you have ad hoc numbers. So it's up to you. It's not like I choose this, that's it. No. You can actually do it and then you can just save it and broadcast. Okay. 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 Good. Quite clear. Quite yeah. Clear. So I right. think that is actually so much about the core tree where the so-called the, the meaty part would be basically how are you going to just set up the structure and then how are you going to reuse it in the future and then oh, all right. the reportings and then of course you know the setup itself uh, how do you want to make sure that you automate where you don't have to pre-type all the messages again? Mm. Uh, you know, uh, uh, how are you going to manage the context when you have changes, you know, in the contact itself? Uh, then, of course, you know, there may be different ways, you know, contact file outlook is one way. Uh, we may have other ways we can support, but, you know, talk to us. 
Right, right. Mm. So it looks like actually after doing the automation, there's no more tree structure. If you look at it, right? Just, yeah. Instead of call trees, you be call all, no? <laughs> Quickly call all. Yeah, so that's what we assure all. you. It's a one click, one click, <laughs> one click, one click, you know, click assurance. Uh, there are no many levels anymore. Yeah. Just that we do have, uh, we can customize how many times you want to send to the person. Mm. Uh, you know, and what, what type, whether it's a uh, voice or SMS, mm. right? So, so your call tree is not a tall call tree. Right, right, right. It's, right, a, right. it's, a, it's like a laser. Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> <Straight away. laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, so it's okay. like that. Okay, great. So so far at this, I hope the, the presentation, okay. the demo is quite clear. And yeah. if anyone got any questions, uh oh. do, do drop us uh in a QA. Yeah, then I will let me share about okay, let me share back my slides, huh? mm -hmm. So these are just uh, some ideas of actually how people use SegQuick or Shop. So that's why you were mentioning can you use for marketing, can you use for this, for that, you know, that is possible you know in that sense because but that's not being the best use of this system right yes exactly actually it's more of like for example you know in, in terms of emergency definitely you know like for example crisis during a disaster ah. during outbreak you know uh, terror attacks yeah i think this is quite good because it's straight away then of course you know uh, there will be yearly exercises like for example evacuation exercises emergencies uh, or fire drill exercises send quick assure will definitely assure you in you know uh, you know execution of the broadcast as per what you want mm. and of course you know uh, sometimes cool. it's more of like uh, you know some kind of like urgent you know urgent care matters you know and you want to actually send out some kind of a mass broadcast like someone missing really, uh, it sounds spot a missing boy or something like that. Uh, you know, so <laughs> mass broadcasting yeah that is also possible you know for example suddenly the school closure during you know like SARS outbreak or you know like like right, right, you know, things okay. like that so you want to have a mass notification to the people may not need a response you know this system is also something for you yeah. to consider what is, what is uh, this? So you can conduct poll and survey. Yeah, so for example, you have maybe some town hall events and you want to conduct a quick poll. Oh. So you want to send, you know, for example, first question, you know, through SMS. Anybody, you know, what, what do you feel? Yes or no? What's the response? Who are you likely to vote as a president? This do not reveal uh, don't participate in such service. <laughs> yeah, so so this is actually something that you can consider so that you will know that oh actually for those who never respond, you can actually try out in other means, you know, to reach out to the maximum number of people at the shortest time to get response. Like. Okay. Yeah. So these are just examples, it doesn't mean that it's limited to that. Okay. Then of course the next one is uh, just a minute. Uh, okay. So then let me also go back to you know sharing the benefits of it. So I share you the use cases, I share you the demo, how you can use, and then what is the what is what is actually a, a automated call tree? Why should you consider an automated call tree? This is actually the these are actually the benefits that you really have to consider why consider that quick right. uh, sure. So you think uh, think about it. So we have multi-channels, you can actually have a so-called in a way a guaranteed delivery of the messages. And then you can reach out to the so-called the, the people at the shortest time possible because it's just a click. Very fast. Yeah, and then uh, we also support, you know, uh, capturing response. So you can actually have message acknowledgement because in SMS world, you know, how do you know the person read the message? You get the person to acknowledge. Mm, okay. Yeah, so 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 that is that is message acknowledgement. And we actually support the voice version also. It's not just a call out, but a call out and capturing response. So, okay. so that is that. And of course, you know, as you have see uh, in the demo earlier, you can see some uh, statistical reports, graphical reports, so that it, and you can even export out, you know, so that you can actually do for, you know, uh, 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 you know evaluation and uh, you know, decision making for the management. And of course, you know, uh, you can structure and save uh, all these, uh, you know, uh, broadcast activations for emergency use. So you can plan ahead. So you will send quick assure you can actually plan ahead on how you would like to execute uh, in times of crisis, in times of you know emergencies, and of course you know having such kind of automated system will actually help you to build you know ensure business resilience in that sense. Hmm, yeah. Right. All right. Okay. We got some uh, very good questions. Uh, maybe I just po post it to you. Hmm. you can answer it live. Hmm. Um, can it be customized by integrating with other? Visitor management system or HR employee database? Yes, yes, it's possible. All right, so yeah. you don't have to key in or uh, mm. extract a file and then upload it to Correct. the system. 
you can actually integrate with some visitor management system. Mm. Yes, right. That one, no, pro no problem. But it's just that it is not the standard one not that you've seen. One. Yeah, so we can do customization in that sense. Well, the, the good thing is because I think we own it, we are the developer of it. Mm. If anything is possible. <laughs> it's just a matter of, uh, let's know your requirements. You probably have to customize it more than the standard one. Mm. Uh, but it is possible. Yes. Okay, so I right. uh, hope that answered your question. Mm. Uh, second question is, Okay, is it a registered sender ID required when sending this uh, SMS? Uh, I, I will assume you are from Singapore. La. So, uh, yes. sending to Singapore. Right. Yes. 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 So, you should have already have a registered sender ID for this. And uh, just to add on a bit, uh, because uh, the sender ID also, also have to take note, uh, because if you are sending with response, uh, by natural way of receiving the SMS would be you know, replying back. So, your sender ID registration will have to be a long code, for example. So oh. that people receive the SMS, people can respond straight away. Oh, it cannot be like say uh can. Quick. Can, 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 it can, can still be can. Just that the, the, it's not the natural way. Just like for example, when you receive an SMS from 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 from, from an organization, you just show a name. I was like, I have to find the number in the container and click. It's one more step, la, one more step okay. for people to respond. Okay. So so I mean Take this, you know, I mean, take this into consideration, like, especially when you want to implement yeah. something for emergencies. So in that sense. Uh, but because we need to send SMS, it still needs to be a registered sender ID. Yes, correct. Right, still right. need to be a registered still need to in be Singapore. Long code also need. Long yes. code, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so answer to that, yeah. yes, mm. it, uh, a registered sender ID is required. Mm. But anything in future, uh, you send SMS uh, requires sender ID. If, if it's a yes, registered it's, one. It's uh. covered, yeah. yeah uh, it's for everyone. Because we are sending this through what we call through the cloud. Uh. Yeah, through mm. the cloud. Okay. Ken, uh, anyone else got questions coming in? Right. If not, um, I guess uh, we covered most of what we want to share. I think uh, Jasmine has clearly uh, demonstrated, hopefully, the steps in a way that uh, is easily understandable for everyone. Uh, simple structure, but at the same time, very effective to reach out what you need to do in a, mm -hmm. in a, in a call three exercise. Uh, so this definitely is one uh, fast way to automate things that you do. Now, if any questions you have, do drop us an email uh, if you're after this event or if you watch this somewhere else, uh, you can always drop us an email at info at sandquick.com. If you need to talk to Jasmine, let us know. We'll give you uh, his her number so you can contact her. Yes. Okay, so uh, with that, we really come to the end. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the... Can we have the slides? Yes, I think we uh, shouldn't be a problem on mm. the slides. We can provide the slides, but we will not just provide your side. We'll do one better. We'll give you the whole video. Okay. <laughs> so you can only watch the whole thing because the demo, uh, the live demo, we really cannot do it in the slide. So you still have to watch the video to understand the features and the steps to configure certain things. Mm -hmm. Okay. I hope that answers uh, all the questions and hope thank you all for taking the time to join us in this webinar. Thank you. Uh, see you. Bye. Bye.